Hi. Last time we want to prove this theorem. Okay. Suppose I have three pair of socks, one pair in gray, one pair in white, and one pair in black. If I pick any four socks, then I will have at least one pair of the same color. So this is the extension of what we have proven in in class where we have only two pairs. All right. Um. So to prove this, I will split the process of picking four socks into two steps. So the first step, I pick three socks, and then I pick the last the last one. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, I, I in this uh, theorem, I have two cases. So if you if you if you look at the first three, three socks, um, uh, there are two possible cases. Either I have a pair of socks with the same color, or I do not. Okay, so it from two possible cases that we have to analyze. And we look at the first case when I have a pair of socks with the same color, because this is what the theorem wants. Then we get uh, that the conclusion of the theorem is true. So the next case, I do not have the pair of socks with the same color. Okay, so I, I'll let you think a little bit from the last video. If you haven't think about it, just pause this video and think. All right, all right. Now, so if I do not have a pair of socks with the same color, what do I have? Right, I have three colors, and I have three socks, and I do not. I have no pair with the same color. This means that uh in the set of four so uh, three socks that i have they ha they should have different colors so i should have one white one gray and one black all right so now when i pick the last one when i pick the last sock this last sock can either be white gray or black right so what color whatever color the last one is we have a matching sock in the first uh set of three socks that I have therefore in the end I should have at least one pa I, ha I would have exactly one pair of socks with the same color because whatever color this one have yeah there is one that with the matching color I that I have previously picked all right so since these two cases cover all possibilities we conclude that the theorem is true right because we show that it's true in every possible ways Alright, so that's an example of a, a proof by cases. It's pretty close to exhaustive pr proof, but uh, we do that in a clever way. Alright, All right. so uh, if you think back a little bit when we want to prove by cases, um, if you look at this in terms of proportional logic, it is like this proof. Okay, so y you have to show that at least one of the cases occurs, and then for all possible cases, it leads to our conclusion, and then we get the, that the we if we have this, we can conclude that the the conclusion is that we want is actually true. Okay, and in many cases when we ha only have two cases, we usually see something like this. Um, uh, yeah, if p is true, then s. If not p is true, then s. Then we conclude that s, and we can usually leave this. Uh, we don't need to prove this, right? Because this is a, a tautology. It's always true, either p or not, not p, right? So you see that people only prove these two, two cases like this, and then we conclude that s is true. You see more about this when we do our homework. Thank you.